So to get started live streaming, all you really need is your smartphone. But at some point, you may want to level up your setup and turn pro. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down my entire live streaming gear checklist, including my computer, microphones, lighting, cameras, and a few new upgrades I've made to this setup. Coming up. Hey, what's up? Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of strategy videos to help you build your influence with social media and YouTube, and also tech gear reviews just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. One of the questions that I get the most is, Sean, what are you live streaming with? Because the quality is so crispy and clear. And while I've covered my setup in the past, I've made a few changes and some upgrades and learned a few new tips. So let's dive into my full live streaming checklist. And number one, of course, is the PC. And I'm not gonna go into details, but this is a 4K video editing PC. I did a full video on it, so I'll link that up on the YouTube card. And so I use the PC for Adobe Premiere editing and all of my work and various things, but it's important because it has enough power to handle a capture card. And so what I actually have inside of the PC is a Blackmagic Intensity 4K capture card, and that allows me to plug in an HDMI input, and therefore I can use any camera that I want. So foundationally, you need either a laptop or a PC to get started. And then number two, that brings us to the camera. Now, my exact camera is a Panasonic GH5 with a 12 to 35 2.8 lens. And so that's why the quality is so crispy. But to be fair, the camera is definitely overkill. Um, and we use it for other things as well. It shoots slow motion, 4K 60, and a lot of other cool things. But then it can just live behind my monitor on my desk here on a ready cam tabletop tripod. So the camera's sitting up there, and then I've got an HDMI cable that runs and plugs into the Blackmagic Intensity uh, Pro card in the back of my PC. And a little tip here is I use a little L bracket HDMI piece so that it actually pulls the HDMI cable away from the selfie screen on the camera so I can have a little bit of monitoring there. But of course I can also monitor in my software. Now when we talk about the price of all this gear, it's pretty crazy. I mean the camera and the lens runs around 3,000 when it was new. It's probably worth about 2,000 now. Um, and then the Blackmagic card costs around $200. But as far as a solution that would be honestly quite a bit simpler, you could pick up an uh, Elgato Cam Link. And actually, this is a cool tool that allows you to plug in a USB port, gives you an HDMI input, and then you can plug a fancier camera into it. And so I'll actually link to the website that shows which cameras work. But if you wanted a similar quality of camera without having to get all this crazy stuff, you could get something like a Sony A5100. One of the reasons why I wanted a proper kind of a DSLR mirrorless camera is I wanted a wider lens. I wanted shallower depth of field. I wanted a nice, you know, 2.8 aperture. And so if you were to look at like a Sony A5100, that's gonna only run you maybe a couple hundred bucks for the body, and you could get a crispy Sigma lens or something else for maybe a few hundred more dollars. The cam links run for right around $100. And again, it's not gonna quite have as robust of processing power as an internal 4K card, but ultimately it's a great solution and a lot of people love using the cam link. And then one other tip, if you wanna upgrade your camera past webcam quality, and it is a big upgrade. I mean, the results that I get with the GH5 are just beautiful. And the same kind of results would come from something like a Sony A5100. But one thing you have to consider with cameras like that is usually buying a separate power supply and making sure that they have the ability to stay on continuously. And the CamLink site actually lists the cameras and lets you know which ones have that and which don't. So I recommend checking that out. But another solution that you could use is a camcorder and it's kind of a traditional camera, right? Because those come with a plug-in power supply. When I think about live streaming here continuously, I need to make sure that I have this GH5 plugged in so it can run all day. And that's one reason why I like it is because it's totally a workhorse. I got the Panasonic power supply. Sony has one as well. It's around 80 bucks. You can buy a knockoff for around 20 that'll plug into a Sony A5100 or even something like an A6. 6400, which again, would kind of be overkill just to put behind your computer, but then you could use it for everything else, vlogging, shooting videos. And so anyways, we'll list resources in the description below and make sure to itemize out everything on this checklist in case you have questions about any of the specific gear. 
So once you've got a PC or a laptop set up, and once you've got your cameras going or multiple cameras and webcams, the next thing of course is audio. And for live streaming from kind of a command center like this, I highly recommend using a USB mic. And in this case, I'm using the Shure MV51. Now this has been an upgrade for me, and I get a lot of questions about this too. Uh, it gets complimented a lot because in the shot, it's kind of a very cool, it kind of has that retro vibe. And so I'm able to kind of move it right over here, get it kind of on the you know corner of the shot, and I'm still able to speak into it, but really have it be positioned nice. So it has a nice aesthetic look on the back. And then what's also cool is that on the front here, I can control the gain just by tapping this plus and minus. And you can go into uh, just vocal mode, vocal with singing, instrument mode, or even monitor or a flat mode. You can mute it really easy, which is nice in case I wanna make sure that like, you know, we have some kind of a meeting or something like mute the mic, you know, whatever. And so you can mute it on and off. I also do that sometimes while live streaming instead of toggling the mute switch. I can, um, if I'm on a group call or something, it's just really easy to mute right on the mic. There's kind of a headphone monitoring mode. And uh, this particular mic is around $150. It's been a workhorse for me. And it's on a Rode boom arm here. So this guy, it's about $100. There's definitely cheaper ones. I mean, the cheapest you could probably go is like the newer USB mic with included boom arm. And it's like, under 40 bucks, I think, here in the US. But no matter what you're doing, one of the biggest priorities for me is plug and play. I wanna be able to come in here, you know, pull the mic out, flip the camera on, turn my lighting on, open up my software, and be ready to go because I pump out a lot of content from right here. Which brings us to the lighting. And so this has been another upgrade, and this is actually the specular lighting kit from Spiffy Gear. Now, uh, we actually first met with Specular um, at uh, like a CES or NAB here in Vegas. We were super impressed with their light because um, it actually is four different bars that can be put into different configurations. So this actually could be a square light. It could just be a stack of, of lights. But the reason it really stood out to me is because I have it set up as a triangle. And again, we talk about this quote here on Think Media, different is better than better. And when I'm sitting and I've you know, got the triangle light on my Instagram stories or in different things, people are always like, what is that light? And you know, ring lights are awesome, but they put a ring in your eyes. So this actually kind of puts a triangle in your eyes, you know? And so it's just kind of cool. This kit just comes with the lights in the box. And so I actually have a separate tabletop light stand, just a small light stand that's on there. And then I've got a little piece because otherwise it would be completely, it would screw right onto the light stand. It would be just, you know, flush like that. So I've got a little piece that allows me to angle it down for my live streams. And so I'll link to those two pieces of kit if you wanted to build something like this. Now, this also is pretty overkill. This light kit itself costs around $500 here in the US. And so as an alternative recommendation, my favorite lights right now, if you're thinking about getting an upgrade or even just building a setup from scratch would be the Elgato Key Light. And Elgato was purchased by Corsair. So maybe it's the Corsair Key Light, but whichever it is, it actually mounts behind your desk. It can actually connect to the stream deck. You can turn it on and off. And it's two, they're $200 each. And so one of those would be good or even two. And so whatever you get, consider your light kit because video thrives off of lighting. And actually one other light that I use in this setup is a hair light. And so this is kind of just a Jimmy rig setup. I have it on a remote here and I've mounted it on my ceiling. It's like a $24 Neewer light. I have continuous power running up there. It's pretty gnarly. Uh, but what's really cool is I can just come in again, plug and play, quick live stream, sit down, hit the button, flip the triangle specular light on and my lighting is good and dialed. And the hair light is nice because as I'm talking to the GH5 here, it puts some nice separation between myself and kind of the background that I have here in my home office. So, so far we've covered the computer, the camera, the microphone, and the lighting, which brings us to number five, and that's the software. And there's a lot of different softwares you could live stream with. You could try OBS, which is free. Um, you could get something like a Wirecast. I've heard mixed things about it and used it a little bit. But what has been amazing for me, and I've clocked like maybe two plus years on it now, is vMix. And so what you're seeing right here is vMix. What's cool is you can actually start off with the free version of vMix and it's limited in some of its 
functionality. What I started with was the HD version. It cost $60 and that got me with a few sources and I live streamed for a while, but eventually what I wanted to be able to do here was add in not just a couple camera sources, but potentially multiple videos. So one of the things I love is that if I want to trigger a pre-recorded and edited video, it's really easy to do that here in vMix. I can just bring it in and push that to any stream. So think about that. You could be live streaming on YouTube, right? And not only share your screen and switch to multiple sources, but you could also play some quality content and maybe commentate on it, maybe go back and forth. You can actually pause it and say, okay, I wanna review that content. Very dynamic to be able to pull in other video sources. And so I started with the HD version of vMix, 60 bucks, but I, you could only put like four or five or however many things down here, including now we have a countdown clock. So if I'm doing a live stream in our inner circle program and we're about to go live in 10 minutes, play that. And so just the ability to start bringing in multiple different sources. And so I love vMix. Now I've upgraded to, the, I think, the 4K version. And even though I have a 4K capture card and a 4K camera, I'm ready to go 4K anytime I want. But right now I stream in 1080p just for the consistency and the output of it. I just don't kind of want to mess with 4K yet. Um, and that's been great for us. But what I love about vMix also is that we use it to bring in guests. And so it makes it really easy to, you can send somebody a web link and then they can just click that link, jump on with their webcam and become one of your sources. And they can be crispy, good audio. I can share, share my screen, play intro stuff and whatever, but then pull them in really easy. And if you wanna take that up to another level, if two people have vMix, you can actually really communicate with each other. So actually, uh, Benji from Video Influencers, he's got his own command center up in Seattle. I'm based here in Las Vegas and he has vMix. So if we each have prepared a little bit of like a slide presentation to share our screen, some training, some screenshots, I can have me on camera and then I can show some training or you know review someone's channel and then I can switch to him and he can pull up his screen as well and it all connects together through vMix. And so as you think about evolving your setup, I think vMix is a uh, great uh, resource. And by the way, Nothing in this video is sponsored. I'll always tell you here on Think Media if, if a brand or somebody you know, is sponsoring something, this is just things that I've built up and collected over the years. And uh, you know, I'm not an affiliate even for vMix, um, but I hope to be one someday. Next up is dual monitors. Now this is a huge priority for me because I wanted to build my dream live streaming setup. And so the reason I love dual monitors is I use the left one as like my dashboard. And so I have vMix up here. I usually have it as small as it can go kind of in this corner. And then let's say I pull up a training. And so, you know, three tips for turning your passion into profit on YouTube. And what I can do here now is easily change my source and have this screen, what I just know this is what people are gonna see publicly, right? And then I can easily cut back to myself and then I'm talking to the camera again with a nice fade in between either um, you know source. And what's also cool is if I wanna screen share and potentially, you know, do a channel review or whatnot, I can easily cut to the, this screen and then back. And so over here, I'll have my, um, you know, upcoming slides and things start to really stack up when you're live streaming. So when I think about going live on YouTube, I've got the chat over here on the left. I also sometimes will work with someone on my team and they're messaging me. So I've got like a little chop chat box over here, my upcoming slides. It's kind of a lot to potentially manage, but as I've been doing it over the years, it's all kind of become more natural. And these distinctions of having my dashboard here, knowing that this is what people will see on screen and I can you know, click through my training and my slides um, as I'm you know, going through things really easy with my uh, arrow keys. I've got hotkeys assigned over here when I live stream with Benji so I can quickly cut from my screen to him or to me on one, two, three. Very easy to program in vMix. And so for really setting up a pro live streaming setup, if you wanna teach and potentially have you know, content as well on your screen, I really recommend considering setting up two monitors. And that also probably brings us to a disclaimer that you might want a pretty gnarly desk, right? This desk is, is pretty thick and it gives me some chance to work here. I've got my keyboard and mouse tray that's kind of underneath here that's able to slide around. And then I've got enough space behind here so I can mount my tripod cameras and lighting and have everything fit here. And again, create a booth where I can just sit down and pump the content out. 
Now I've got one other thing on my checklist to share with you, but I wanna pass the question off to you. What are some of your favorite live stream accessories or what are some questions that you have about this setup? Um, I would love to cover some of those in future videos, so let me know in the comments section below. Now, one final recommendation for live streaming, especially if you're live streaming with somebody else, is headphones, but ones that are potentially covert in case you don't want them to be seen on screen. And so I actually picked up a, a pair of uh, headphones. Phil DeFranco promoted these uh, and they were mass drop headphones. Um, they're called the New Force EDC3 in-ear monitors. And so they're probably overkill. I mean, they were $75, but the reason I love them is because I oftentimes will use just one of the headphones and I'll kind of hide everything else behind me in my shirt. And so it's almost like you kind of are sort of co covert. You just have the one black and the cables are behind you. Just a thought if you don't wanna have like a giant pair of headphones or like obviously white um, kind of AirPods or something and you want a covert kind of discreet way to hear whoever else. And the reason for that, right, is if you have the other person's audio coming through your speakers, you can get a lot of feedback. So when I'm live streaming with Benji or when I'm doing a training in our inner circle membership uh, group with Heather Torres, like whatever it is, I like to um, you know, be able to use those headphones to keep things clean and lean and make sure my live stream is sheen when you fail at trying to be a rapper. But hey, that was my live stream checklist. If you wanna check out a summary of it, of course, I'll put it in the YouTube description below. And if you wanna see some other videos in our live stream tips series, I actually talk about the four ways to go live on YouTube, a really strategic video about crushing it on Facebook Live. That's all on a playlist. I'll link that up on the YouTube card and post it in the YouTube description as well. I hope this video added value to your life and I will see you in the next one. Peace.